When I spoke, hey, John Stoller, yeah. do you remember me? I poured out a hand and smiled. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you did. <laughs> the reason that we are so angry because we lost loved ones. My son's father was found dead, beaten in a garbage can after he was beat by the St. Paul police. They took his body and they threw him in a dumpster. In 2009, August 19th, Monday is the anniversary that you guys, that the St. Paul police beat severely, busted, his skull was cracked in half, and they threw his body in a dumpster, and he came through on the flatbed out in Evergrove Heights. Then the police sat outside my house and with my three-year-old son, followed me, followed his mother, his, th his little brothers and sisters. So this woman is angry. Would you be angry? Oh, this woman this is past angry. Yes. Mm -hmm. This Would woman is past angry. Because it ain't child. just about Cornell Handy. It ain't about Justin Teagan. It's just not about Isaac Hayden, Philando Castile, Jamar Clark, Marcus Golden. It's a collective all. I'm past angry, but if you think I'm angry, wait till you hear what God has to say. Mm. Wait till you hear what he has to say. He just told me, be still, he will repay. Mm. Vengeance is coming, and it's coming in the wrath of the spirit. You don't need to peek, John Troy. You remember me. You don't need to peek while you sit and do nothing. Mike Freeman, how was your vacation? Mm. No. Yeah. How was your vacation? Yep. I didn't ask to be here. You sent for me. Yep. I'm here. When you killed my son, you sent for me. That's right. Then you had audacity to walk through the hallway and be alive. It, don't, it ain't no fun, is it? It ain't no fun. And what the hell have you all lost? Nobody over there has lost a son. Only thing y'all lost is y'all damn eyes. And I'm going to need for you to find them. You lost compassion. Now, how in the world are you going to have a me without us? That's right. Mm -hmm. How are you going to bring somebody from 2,000 miles away, but you can't have any of the families that actually live here, here and talking about this issue? Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. people yeah. lost love And how dare you have a meeting? How dare you have this meeting with no members of any families that didn't get justice from this system? Yeah. How dare you have this meeting? We are not standing for it. We will not have it. Boots! Boots! Boots on the ground! We're here! We're here! We're here. We're here. To shut this shit down! Boots! Boots! Boots on the ground! We're here! We're here! To shut this shit down! Boots! Boots! Boots on the ground! We're here! We're here! To shut this shit down! Boots! Boots! Boots on the ground! We're here! We're here! To shut this shit down! And guess what? I ain't never turning around. No, no. Never. Right. Until that great getting up in the morning is no longer there for me, I'll be here. And just remember one thing. I walk by faith and not by sight. Mm. My faith is real clear. Where's your faith? How do you question your faith? Mike Freeman? John Choi? Harrington? Harrington? How do you question your freedom? John Joy, you can't even look me in my eyes. I don't know. That's yeah, right. I don't know. That's, That's right. right. This is my son that Miko Norman and they Daniel Yon's killed. Come on. And that damn circus that you put on for Orlando Castillo. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That wasn't no trial. That was a circus. So with that being said, do I get to take a break? Do I get to drink? Mm -hmm. Do I get to drink, get drunk? Because mm -hmm. see, if anybody got a reason, I do. Mm -hmm. That's right. But I don't drink. Mm -hmm. And I ain't drugging. I need somebody mm -hmm. else. Oh, I serve a mild God. I serve a mild God. Isaac Aiden, that was your last victim. Do you remember him? That's my brother that you killed. That was the oldest in our family member. He was one semester short of graduating from the University of Minnesota with his IT and infrastructure degree. Instead of going to his graduation, we got a letter from the University of Minnesota saying to go to, they want to do a remembrance in his honor. You took that away from us. My brother will never get to see me graduate because of you. He will never see any of us graduate because of you. He will never see anything that we work hard for. We came here for a better life. We left the Civil War just to come here and fight a different type of war. That's not right. This is supposed to be the land of the free. And the, this is supposed to be the land with opportunities. What opportunities? For you to kill us? They the biggest gangbangers. Yup. They the biggest.
these cartels. Mm -hmm. Look at that. They're not in the street, they inside of the building. They shot him with five officers, officers and, shot him with rifles. And five the officers yeah. shot him with rifles. Is he a bear? For Why are you guys, shooting him with rifles? Yeah, for those of you guys who don't know, my brother, they called 90 officers on him. 90 on one Indian. man. You guys on heard me correctly. Nine zero. I didn't say nine, I didn't say nineteen. And two of the officers shot with non-lethal weapons, beanbag, non-lethal beanbag bullets, and non-lethal explosives. If your life was in so much danger, why would you leave with non-lethal weapons first? Why would you call 90 officers on one man? Why would you shoot with rifles? And then on top of that, two-fifths of the officers that killed my brother have already previously killed someone in 2015 and 2013. The other one of the officers had three lawsuits filed against him for his conduct in administering tests. Why are you putting them on the front line? Mm. Why are they not fired? Putting them on the front line, people who have a history of previously killing people, tells you what kind of mindset you guys had going into this situation. They serial killers. Exactly. Serial killers. They are the serial killers. And they're back right. on the job. And you, you release them to the community. And you all allowed that. The administrative that. leave was three days. And by demanding justice and by demanding the release of evidence, Bloomington Police Department blocked me on Twitter so I can't request anything. I can't see their information, which is a direct violation of my First Amendment rights. Right. According to Minnesota state law, the day the officers were put on paid administrative leave, their names were supposed to be released. Me and my sister had to go back to DCA countless times just to get the names of the officers released. Yeah. And after a week and a half of fighting the DCA, they finally decided to release the names. But we can't find any pictures. Do you guys think it's a coincidence as soon as the names are released that all the officers don't have a Facebook, they don't have any accounts? There's literally no trace of them on the internet. You guys think that was a coincidence? They had oh, over no. a week and a half according to, to all accounts. According to Minnesota Statute 13.82, Subdivision 15, all this evidence, the body cameras, the squad cam, that were originally created for public accountability right. should be, can be made available. Any yeah, private sure. data can be made public it if it be. helps with the law enforcement process and takes away uh, widespread rumors and unrest. Does this not look like unrest to you? Mm. That's right. And it's going to be more unrest if you try to have this meeting. Well, with your black and brown, it's going to go down. This meeting gets shut down. And I walked with Justine Demar, but she was given her rights the very next day. We knew right. that Muhammad Noor had killed her. That's right. Immediately. And ladies and gentlemen, the game is to Behold the work of the law enforcement. enforcement. You rolling your eyes at. Why are any of the these families, why are any of the work of the law enforcement since the year 2000? These are the people who have been killed. And this scroll doesn't even have some of the latest names. Me. I'll drink of that. This scroll represents the handiwork of Minnesota law enforcement since the year 2000. Why are these families not invited to this panel? Yeah. Why are none of I'm these right. families invited? You have no lose the answer two thousand miles away. But why away. is there not a Minnesota family on this, this panel? Law. Are you trying to take credibility from the notoriety of her son's case? Mm. Is that what this is? Mm. You don't really care about that. You bring somebody from out of state who does not know the problem of police in Minnesota <coughs> and try to use it to cover yourselves. Try to use the, no the notoriety of her son's case to build some credibility onto your case. You try to have Hodan Hassan on this panel right after Somalia America was killed by five law enforcement officers with rifles in your state. And you do not invite the family, you do not invite anybody. You use her credibility and her respect from the Somali American community to build some credibility to your to your panel. And that's not right. Invite these families. That's right. Give them justice. Or skip the whole thing altogether and simply do what you know you need to do, which is to institute an independent agency with prosecutory and investigatory powers. Skip the BCA. Skip these individual prosecutors who never go after police, even in not deadly force incidents, but crimes that they commit when they engage in excessive force. That's a crime too. And if you ever prosecuted those cops for that, we maybe wouldn't have this many people written on a damn scroll. This is your handiwork. Mm -hmm. And you know what you need to do to get this to end. And if you would step up and be responsible, and create the agency that needs to happen, independent, sovereign agency that can investigate and prosecute police killings, take yourselves out of the picture because you're not capable. This is the BCA is a, is, is a bureau the of lies. Of you people are not capable of this. The bill of shame. That's right.
This is and on, the topic of the BC, and on the topic of the BCA, like the only person listed to testify on the BCA today is the BCA. So, this, so the BCA is going to sit there and tell us all about the problem with the BCA? Oh, no, and the BCA, BCA to, it's in the person yeah. representing and the people. BCA tell me why Mike Phil threw a tamper tantrum when he was sitting down with me and my brother about our older brother's case and walked out. <coughs> So whoever's representing the BCA, give us an explanation of why Mike Phil walked out of that room when we were asking him questions regarding the murder of my brother. Is that, why is he, what, where is he? If you're gonna speak on the BCA and their investigations, tell me about that. Tell me why Mike Phil and Scott told me they're done with interviewing the 90 people that were on the scene. What about, what about my brother? He was on the scene. There was 91 people on the scene. My brother was there. Why was he not being interviewed? If you're doing a thorough, impartial, fair investigation, why was he not interviewed? Well, nobody was on the scene, let's be clear, when Justine DeMond got killed. Silent scene, but we got a conviction. That's right. Because of That's right. They got monetary. Based on how they managed to make happen. Black people get killed, seen, every day. No. Nothing happens. But that's no Castile that's to let you know that's a world clean. Don't be Again. Behold the handiwork of Minnesota law enforcement since 2000, only since 2000. And in the history of this state, we have had two police officers, now a third, being prosecuted for the death of people at the hands of police. In the history of the state, we have the two, now a third. And of that, only one has actually been he knows that you were involved in this picture with you my brother back in 2016. Do you recall taking this picture with my brother back in 2016? He voted for you. He is dead. What are you doing about this? Why haven't you said anything? You use being black and Muslim to to just mm. to give you mm. when it's convenient for you. That's right. You use being black and Muslim when it's convenient for you to build you credibility. But when real black Muslim men are getting killed, you are silent and you are impartial and you do discussion panels like this, and how 90%, you have more than half police officers so pro-police people on this panel. You have all these dead people from Minnesota killed by Minnesota police on a scroll and none of their families are invited to this panel to talk about it. You have police and pro-police people talking about police killings, and you call it a deadly encounter. And he like I was walking down the street and I met him. One shot. You are normalizing police council. killings with the title of this word group. You are trying to justify police killings. Murder. Why don't you have any of these families on here? These are people killed by Minnesota police. My son's father was beat and murdered by the St. Paul police. I want to repeat it now that the rest of you guys are here. He was beaten in the midway and thrown in the dumpster. His body came through on the flatbed. The garbage truck picked his body up, not knowing that the police beat him and threw his body in the dumpster. His body came through on the flatbed in Emerald Heights. Chief Harrison, you were the chief at the time when my son's father was murdered. There was a cover-up. It was a cover-up. They covered my son's father's murder. They covered it up, and then they followed me and harassed me with my three-year-old child in the car. They sat outside his mother's house because we wanted justice. We wanted what any of you would want. If someone did this to your loved one, we wanted justice. We're not asking for anything big. We're asking for our loved ones to get the justice that they deserve. Right. And transparency. We're That's asking. Right. If this was your loved one, if this was your child, I have a 13-year-old son that I had to raise because the St. Paul police beat my son's father and threw his body in the garbage. They didn't throw him in a river. They didn't throw him in the woods. They threw him in the garbage. That's what they think of us. That's what they think of us. They think that we're garbage. And we have to come out because we have suffered in silence. We have been suffered in silence and they have done everything. 
rubbing elbows with the white supremacists, you're going to find out y'all black lives don't matter either. Right. 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 Um, and for those of you guys, oh, go ahead. If you guys have these positions, use the position to fight for the families out here. Because guess what? You guys might be one stop away from getting killed like our loved ones. Oh, you that's know, not they're not exempt. They're, they're not exempt. It could be your loved one next. It could be your loved one next. So use this position to help us fight because they're killing our people. They need to get away with it. Take they're out here. They're still out there. I want to make it out clear. There. I want to make it clear on behalf of the coalition that our demand is not to add us to the table. Make your table look nice. You Put a couple of family members you on had that. You had that chance. Most of the people that have not had that chance. Before my mother was even killed in March, we had that chance. 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 We had that you brought in a wonderful woman. I know her, Wanda Johnson. She's a lovely woman. But you brought her 2,000 miles away for a case that happened over 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And no families from Minnesota are sitting at your table. And no activist said you work around police brutality, police accountability, and are no sitting people, at your table. And, and no people of disabilities. <laughs> you say it. No and not a single person with a background in mental health or disability. 50% of people who are killed annually by the cops are people with mental health. Uh, and crisis and disability. There is not a single person at this table. We got the posh lobbyists. We got 60% cops. In fact, we were asking for representation on this work group for months, just like everybody else. In fact, we had people with disabilities lining up before the Olmstead sub cabinet to ask for representation on this committee. And this is not just, oh, well, we forgot. This is literally a bad faith effort yeah, and then and another bad. slap in the face from this administration to leave out people with disabilities again. Y'all need to go home. You left us off the last we one. Here. We know what needs to happen. It's clear as a bell. We know what needs to happen. You need to put into place what you <coughs> talked about immediately after your election, Keith Ellison, which is yeah. an independent agency, under your office likely, an independent agency, sovereign, that would investigate and prosecute police in critical incidents. It's not controversial. It's been introduced right. to the legislature Listen, multiple times. Scott Dibble introduced it. John Lesh introduced it. John Lesh introduced it. This is not something that you need to have a bunch of meetings with a bunch of so-called experts who aren't actually experts. And by the way, that little piece about who's going to be on the community part of the panel is a goddamn insult. It is a complete and total insult. I'm gonna You're going to have on this panel, I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. You're going to have on this panel, you're going to have a person who represents a, a, a significant organization, ACLU, to be sure. But again, that's not the voice of the community. That's the voice of a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. You're going to have on this panel the state ombudsman yep. for mental health and developmental disabilities. Again, <laughs> not a member of the community, a government agent, <coughs> a bureaucrat. And that's fine. She plays a great role. We don't have a problem with her. But she doesn't represent the community. And if you're going to have a panel that says the community, you damn well better have some community people. That's right. That's and right. if you're going to have a, a, a grouping like this, you damn well better have the right people at the table. And don't you dare act like you've got the right people at the table now. Because any don't. board that talks about police killings had better not have 60% cops mm. and cop-friendly people on it. That's and right. if you are not an out-of-state family person, you need to go an out-of-state family person, need to go I'm home. right here. I came all the way from Los Angeles, California to fight for my brother. It's a slap in the face that you guys have other out-of-state families when we're right here. You have Minnesota family right here. It was a slap in the face that all of us sit here and not fight. And we come this many miles. To yeah, we're the same. That's the same. We're all the way from Chicago to be here to the today. The there are ten families represented in this room today. Ten local families represented in this room. Not one of them got an invitation. Not one of them got told about this. We have to find out about this the day before about who's going to be on these panels. And he, uh, while you you're busy sneaking it out of town. You knew about this. Your office was contacted. Yeah, My brother was killed on July 2nd, last month, July 2nd, 2019. Your office was contacted July 3rd and was told that they would pass this on. Your front desk person said they would pass this on to you. You knew about this. For those of you guys who don't know, I'm so sorry, y'all. 
Isaac was 23 years old. He was supposed to graduate from the University of Minnesota with his IT degree this fall. On his own business. He started his own business, home care business, to help elderly in the community with light housekeeping and different day-to-day uh, -day tasks, December 2017. He employed people. And two months before he got killed, he was trying to start a nonprofit to uh, address the drug situation in the black and brown and minority community, but he never had the chance to do that. He had all the templates for his website and everything he was discussing with me, and then he got shot July 2nd. On July 2nd, 90 officers were called on him. 90 officers for one man. Armored vehicles, two SWAT teams. There was for nine no different agencies no involved. Reason. Isaac never had a criminal history, but you know what the media wanted to say? He had a series of petty, petty misdemeanors. Parking tickets. Parking tickets. Parking tickets. Any tickets. way to dirty up a person's name. This is what that, that, that standoff lasted three and a half hours, and when I went to the scene, they refused to let me speak with my brother. They refused to let, let him even know that I was at the scene. So my brother was shot and killed, thinking that he died by himself when I was at the scene. And what pisses me off about this whole situation is you know what the first question the negotiator asked? What's his immigration status? Was Isaac Aiden a citizen? Shame! Oh. Shame! Oh. He was a human being! Shame! Was Isaac Aiden a citizen? So are you guys gonna determine what actions you're gonna take based on if he was a citizen or not? Shame on them. Shame. And y'all sit here like you're gonna have this meeting. And I'm here to tell you now. For those who don't, uh, don't y'all sitting here like this has got some legitimacy, They're and I'm here to tell you it doesn't. Yes. It has no legitimacy because none of these families are sitting here with you today. How do you fill up a whole big old horseshoe table full of people, and not any of them are family members of people who have been killed by the police in this state? How do you have a whole horseshoe full of people, and not any of the people at this table have are advocates around disability? How do you have a table like that? What we got, we got a rich foundation, we got a, a group that does legal stuff and, and so forth, which is fine. We're not taking that down, we're not condemning that. But not, but and then a whole mess of cops. And how do y'all sit here and act like this don't is not to be at all? Yeah, don't forget the lobbyists. Why is right. there a police out lobby on this committee? What is that? Right. Why is the police lobby? There's the people lobby. Why are people who are killed by police? Why are they stopping our killings? Let Monique speak for a second. I am the Anabarcus Golden who was killed two he was unarmed for 11 hours until a gun was turned in his on him by Sheila Landy of the St. Paul Police Department. Everything about that case was a lie, and there were no laws in place to protect him or our family. No laws in place to hold police officers accountable for demeaning and changing evidence, re-recording over audio. That is simply a misdemeanor, if it would ever go to trial. These things are ridiculous. So this whole committee is simply a means of posturing, looking like there's an attempt to make change, a real change will come when the legislation is written to give us equal protection under new laws. And unless you're writing those legislation, there's no need to even have a table. Mm -hmm. We're here to kick down the legs off this phony right. table that you call the committee and demand the justice that we need. Start writing the legislation. That's what we know. We can write the legislation that will help the families and protect the families that will stop police from sitting outside and shining their light on the houses of those that they've killed. It'll stop police from putting surveillance on the phones and the houses of the families that are left to survive and drive. It'll set up funding for families to pay for funerals when police are killed. It'll set up funding for families to pay for private investigators. It'll pay for the things that the families need to find justice. It will create a system in which we automatically have all data preserved. We don't have to find a lawyer or pay a lawyer to write a letter to preserve data. It should automatically be preserved anytime someone is killed by the police. Yep. There are laws to be written in place, and the only thing that we've seen for legislation in Minnesota are laws that are targeted at demonstrating peaceful protests. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make protesters pay for police hours used in, in, in showing up at protests and demonstrations, targeting us as we try and demand justice and make the call that police need to be held accountable. And everything about the system, everything about the laws that are set up, are set in place so police can continue to kill. Our police system here is nothing more than a cult. And it is a cult with cells all across this country. And that is how, from state to state and from city to city, we continue to see 
people executed by police when stories don't add up. It doesn't matter what logic is not there. Where the police say will go, and the police will use their connections and plant stories in the media. And the prosecutors and the media will continue, will continue right. to repeat these and lies. Use those lies and not they the demonize and villainize our loved ones and create false stories. This is a different kind of death. These deaths at the hands of police is unlike any other murder that takes place. This is the one where the people who would normally do the investigation are the ones doing the cover-ups. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. yes. We don't have the same outlet as others. <coughs> we don't have situations where you see with even opioid deaths. You never see anyone saying, oh, well, he shouldn't have taken it. He had a choice. You don't see that, but yet, when our people are killed, they are blamed. Yep. They should have complied. It's not about complying. It's about being black, it's about being melanated. We have to understand that the FBI put out a report about 13 years ago saying that white supremacist organizations were infiltrating police departments yeah. That's right. to kill and to torment and to beat people of color. Why, this is why we see it's not just that, oh, they're afraid. No, they, there are people who want to kill. And we see abuse from police, not just in homicide, but police need to be corralled on all of them because they are beating people, they're placing false evidence at scene, and people's lives and families are being destroyed because of the actions of the police. And until the laws are put in place, then nothing that is done will ever have teeth, and there will not be change. And what's going to happen is it's going to go too far, and someone's going to be pushed to the next level, and the unnecessary is going to happen. So if we do not want the unnecessary to happen, then stop posturing, Stop bringing in people into a circle where they think they are going to make change. We know that you have people set there to make sure there's no real change. That's right. That's right. right. The only outcomes and deliverables that I saw from the news report in the paper was a report to the legislature and recommendations to the police. Police will not have to follow recommendations. No, they won't. That's pointless. They won't even read them. A report them. to the legislation is unnecessary unless that report is a report in which the families have been allowed to come to work and given the stipend to find investigators to tell the truth about their loved ones' cases and highlight and call out all the means and the tactics used in the cover-up and the lies and then go back and prosecute these police and officers when the laws are lifted, just like the laws were lifted for the statute of limitations in Minnesota for people that were abused by priests in the Catholic Church. You can do the same things for all of these families on this list so that we can get some justice. And until these things and other measures are put in place, there's no point of sitting here, wasting money, wasting time, acting like there's gonna be some real change. We know what needs to happen. You do too. Sitting here, they don't know what needs to happen. None of them have been out there. None of them have food. They haven't been out there. It's right. been a murder. Right. 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 Where do you go here all the time? That's why nobody here was invited. You, you have the highest That's right. power. They're not the interested in the international change. And these county attorneys, <laughs> you can do something about it. It's been a month and three weeks since my brother has been murdered. No release of evidence. There was nobody on the scene to film. To record. That's the only difference between Philando Jamar's cases and my yeah. brother's case. There was nobody there to record. But the police, Egan police, called 90 officers. There were 90 officers on the scene. That's 90 body cameras. It was a train. Their excessive use is coming back to the haunt them now. You have footage from every single angle. You can't pick the most vague one. You can't do any of that. The only other option is to alter it. And it has been a month, and it'll be a month and three weeks on Tuesday. We demand the release of these evidence. And not to discredit anyone sitting at this table, but does anybody know the training process that a, a police officer goes through? I will discredit everyone sitting at this table because you're still sitting here. <laughs> right. right. You have no legitimacy taking up this issue. Not a one of you sitting at this table has one ounce of legitimacy to address this issue. If you're a cop, take your cop ass home. If you're a legislator, take your legislator ass home. Y'all ain't done nothing in all these years to change this situation. And I say nobody in this table has one ounce of legitimacy. And to Not guys, one. To give you guys, to give you guys right. give you some information. Well, Oh, so here are the demands for this, uh, for why we're here today. Because this is why we're here today. I guess we hand it out to all of you. So this is not your table. table. I'll never read it. So, so I'm gonna read it for you then. Immediately disband this working group on police involved deadly force and commerce. 
Shut it down. Shut this shit down. Monique gave you a lot of reasons why you should not have this group. A lot of uh, Michelle has. Uh, these families have. So, cause let me tell you, when the BCA and the cops investigate, they give them bullshit. That's right. Two, immediately implement an independent state agency to investigate deadly force incidents or murder. That's what it is. Murder. murder and f uh, prosecute the involved law enforcement officers. We want the police to be held accountable every time they shoot yes. a gun. That's right. Beat right. somebody up. That's ridiculous to get three days paid leave and you're back on the job. Shame. Shame. And the police get the police the police. Yep. What it's like, what it's it like paying Peter to rob Paul. What the hell? In fear-based military-style warrior training, significantly increase the amount of de-escalating training throughout statewide policy, legislative, and public <coughs> board requirements. You shouldn't get an hour of equity training and 90 hours to learn how to shoot your gun. What the? Shame. What is that? How are you getting 90 Shame. hours to learn how to shoot your gun, but one hour of de-escalation training online? Mind and you. warrior training teaching you that everybody around the corner is about to shoot you. Okay? You have people running around cops that are the biggest goddamn cowards on the planet because they think everybody around the corner is about to shoot you. That ain't right. That's wrong. What else you Four, calls for community members suffering a mental health crisis, crisis a wellness check, must be responded by, to by experienced mental health workers and those knowledgeable in how most effectively to address the needs of people with disabilities. We need a more generalized training model than CIT. CIT is a terrible model. Annual in-person mental health training provided by proven, experienced, and respected mental health experts not online training, from the local community instead of current ineffective crisis and intervention training, or CIT. Enforcement of discipline and prosecution of law enforcement who engage in excessive force. There are people in here who are victims. They're, they didn't die, but they're victims of a, a billy club. They're victims of tasering. They're victims of harassment That's from right. the cops. Seven, annual required in-person anti-oppression training conducted by private and community-based organizations that represent people from oppressed groups. You've got a boatload of those groups in this, in, in this community alone. That's right. And you should be using them. You got them in this room. What up? Eight, all law enforcement agencies must conduct mandatory psychiatric tests of their officers every three years after critical incidents involving police shootings after deadly force incidents and when transferring to different police departments within the state. The officer that killed Isaac Aiden killed someone in Duluth. And then he got to go and have a transfer to Egan. He shouldn't have had, even had a job in Duluth or Egan. Require the release of unedited video footage to the families of police killed by law enforcement with uh, officers within 48 hours of a fatal incident. Um, yeah, uh, like your body cams, your dash cam, witness video, and surveillance video from police businesses and residents. We open all BCA yes. and county prosecutor fatal law enforcement cases. We know the BCA is full of crap and have done piss poor jobs on every case since they started investigating police shootings. They did a piss poor job. Same with the prosecutors, like Mr. Right. Freeman and Mr. Choi in this So room. those are our demands. You have these on your table, you better read them. Because Only a that, handful of people were reading them as I was looking around the room. Maybe two people. The rest of y'all just sat there. You guys do not care. Well, Our lives right. do not matter to you. So and Mr. Sorry. Ellison, your son sits on the council. Fish you don't fish. come to our community anymore. You don't. And I am tired. I walked up on you and I tried to give you this information. You know what you said to me? You said, brother, have a nice day. And walked away. Shame. You don't Shame. care. Shame. Shame! You don't care. You're only black and Muslim when it's convenient for you. That's real. James, and I'll go fix your face. And let's get to the end of the video. Mr. Koppel's not talking to you. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the video. And let's get to the end of the
They jumped out that car with guns drawn, knowing what they was going to do. And what were they going to do? They was going to kill him. That's right. They didn't give him a goddamn chance to do anything. That's right. And when the family came to talk to you, what did you do, Mike Freeman? You walked out. Walked out, right. You did not care. You went back to your death for another drink, because you don't care. Didn't even take the time out to even talk to none of us. You never got the time out to find what was going on with us, did you? No, you didn't. Why, he got three lines that he left behind that can access that body cam footage on the goddamn internet and see their dad bleeding in the goddamn alley dying. Why, your officers sat there and gave him no type of medical attention. That's right. And guess what? Brian Kelly was a certified medical uh, aide. He knew how to help him out there. He didn't do nothing. What did he do? He shot his gun off too while he was already on the ground dying. Shame on him. No accountability for nothing for them police officers. Got to go right back on their job. Got to go do what the hell they got to do while my brother is six feet deep down in the ground. That ain't right. I'll have to correct you. There is police accountability if you're a black cop killing a white victim. Okay. 
As it is right now, when the police murder someone, they get to go off on paid vacation. They don't have to do a thing. There's no accountability for them. The investigators, they don't have to do a job. They can do a schlock job, and it doesn't even matter at all. The prosecutors, they don't have to prosecute. So they the way it's set up right now, investigation. Right. no one has any incentive to change. But let me tell you something. I know change is uncomfortable. I know change is awkward. I know change is expensive, but change is coming. Everyone in this room right here, this is where the change is coming from, in this room right here. So I know this not at this table, people. but no, not at this table. No, the people that you see around the edge of the room, this is where the change is coming from, and so that's why we're here today. And I'd, I'd rather eat crumbs with bugs than steaks with snakes. <laughs> Look at that bunch of snakes up in here. Hopefully <laughs> our messages have touched your hearts. Look at this scroll. Look at this scroll. Read the name. Look at these names. The bill Look at how many families are snakes. suffering. And you will say. Besides your position, besides your position, we are human beings. Every last person that sits in this room is a human being. It's only a matter of time before all of these families, it's going to be a reaction. People can't keep suffering in silence. Somebody's going to react. Somebody's, it's, it's going to be a shootout with the police. Something's going to happen. Families, you're not going to be able to continue to kill somebody's brother, somebody's son, That's somebody's right. husband before somebody's going to react is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Behind your job, you have a heart. Behind your description, you are a human being. Do something. Do something. Do something. Right. But not through this committee because this committee is useless. This is useless. It needs to be shut down. You should have never called it in the first place, Keith Ellison. I'm talking to you. You should have never called for this in the first place, and you should have never made it the way you made it. The I'm sorry. Just in his Don't 
matter. Understand that. And for you to be on the phone, you a cold-hearted, cruel, and sensitive black man. You're going to have to come down some notches. But we're going to bring you down some notches. Because the same people that put your ass in that seat is going to be the same one that put your ass in that seat. That's right. So you do do that. Hey. Come on. Get in And these white folks going to want to boot your ass out. Yeah. And don't let me sit there and laugh. I promise you. Oh, yeah. Let me introduce myself. My name is Kimberly Handy Jones. My son is Cordell Handy. Cordell Quinn Handy. Killed by Nico Norman, Nathaniel Yance. Two St. Paul police shot my son at the same time. Let me tell you something. While he was on his hands and knees praying for his None family. of you all will forget Cordell Quinn Handy. But your asses will always remember Kimberly Handy Jones. I'm going to make damn sure of it. Mm -hmm. You, you, your asses is out that seat. Whoa! Mm -hmm. yeah. people killed since 2000. 11 a year, while you talk in this committee for the next year, 11 more people will be killed. Your talk denies the implementation of what we know needs to be done. Your talk denies justice. Your talk covers up for killer cops. That's right. There have been two just in the past month. That's two right. police shootings just in the past month. And we had, in the state of Minnesota, five people killed in the three week period between November and December of last year, yep. all five were suffering from mental illness. Yep. At the time they were killed, they were in a mental health crisis. <laughs> Ain't nobody been prosecuted for any of those shootings. And there's been no efforts whatsoever to bring disabled people to the table. It is utterly shameful. Do you look in this room? Do you all see anybody at your little horseshoe table that represents the rights and interests of disabled people and people with mental illness, you've got nobody on this committee that has anything like that. Despite the fact that we've been asking since February. That's right, that's right. And by the way, that March letter we sent, that wasn't the only letter we sent. We have sent three communications to Ellison's <coughs> office and to this committee, and no response. That tells us that you all do not give a goddamn. You don't care. You, didn't care right. you don't care. And that's why you have no legitimacy no. sitting at this table or having this meeting. Y'all need to take it elsewhere because we are not having it. This Keith is, Ellison. We are not having it. It's really ironic to me that this morning KMOJ played an interview where you were warning Minnesotans about scams. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Because you're right. Someone gets killed by the cops. 
It's not fun and gay. You think we want to be we here right now? We are being forced to pay for our brother's killers right now. We pay sales tax. We pay tax money. We are paying for our killers, our brother's killers. And it's, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. This is this is fake. It's fake. It's phony. It's a dog and pony show. Yep. It's something to make us feel better. You didn't want us to come here. Why did you put something together if you didn't want us to come here? Because you knew we were going to come here and shut your stupid little meeting down. Because this is not right. And you know it's not right. And you're sitting there and you're looking at us like we're crazy. We're not crazy. You drive us crazy because of every, all the policies and shit. You'd rather, uh, you'd rather uh, limit our rights to speak out versus why don't you start prosecuting some cops and putting some cops in jail instead of putting protesters in jail? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, why don't you get up and walk out of here because you know in your Thank heart you. that this is wrong. Oh. You know that you shouldn't even be here because you hear the story. You know what? We, what we are saying is real. We are living it. I lived it. I live with my 13-year-old son, and, and I have to tell him this one day. I have to tell him that his father was in a garbage can, and the St. Paul police are the ones that put him in the garbage can after they bust his skull in half. I have to tell him that. I live this. So, <coughs> yet, get up because you know as a human being, despite your title, that this is wrong. This is fake. It's wrong. All these people, imagine how many officers it is. With all these things on this list, imagine how many officers are out there. They got their job. And they still got their job. The people that murdered my son's father, they're still out there. I had to live, I was scared to go outside because they followed me. They followed me, they sat outside the store after they murdered my son's father. I had a three year old. I was 23 years old. His mother, after they threw her child in the garbage, they sat outside her house because she got an attorney to fight for her child. Think about this. Think about it. That's all we're asking you guys to do. That's all that we're asking you guys to do. Right is right, wrong is wrong. This meeting is wrong. Unless you're here to put something together to hold the police accountable, there's no need in having this meeting. And you might as well get up and go home. Because guess what? It could be your son, your son, you, Elijah. It could be you next. That's the point that we're trying to make. So what are you going to do when it comes to your doorstep? What are you going to do when it's your brother or your son? Run us. They will be. Run us like they always do. They'll run us. These people won't help you. And he was smart about this too by making nine out of the 16 panelists black. You were strategic about that. Yes, he was. Well, pisses me off more Still than anything. Fake. I don't know if you guys got a chance <coughs> to read the website about this meeting, but what was posted was Clarence Castile lost his nephew to gun violence. That's shame. Yeah. Oh, That's true. true. Yeah. Yeah. That to gun violence. Police violence. Right. To gun violence. If I saw an article saying that Isaac Aiden <laughs> lost his life to gun violence, I, I, I do not know what I would do. I would not be on that panel. Why are we sugarcoating this situation? We're calling it deadly encounters instead of murders. Yeah. We're using it's all these murder. terminologies to try to de-escalate and sugarcoat this yeah. real serious situation. Yeah. Like the right. only reason Isaac died July 2nd is because he was a black man. Isaac did not have a criminal history. He was supposed to graduate from the University of Minnesota. He started his own business. That is what at least I would think every immigrant strives to do, and Isaac did accomplish all those things. Plus, he had a lot more planned within the following years to come. The deductive what did Isaac estimate, do wrong besides being black? The deductive estimate is immigration you can be status. Black, during you, that, can, you can be a successful co black college student from the suburbs and still get gunned down by police and become a statistic by not making it to 25. That was my brother. He followed everything. Graduated high school with the highest ACT of his graduating class. Went to the went to St. Paul College. Got his uh, associate's degree. Transferred to the University of Minnesota. Was working on his uh, IT and infrastructure degree. Was from Columbia Heights. Was from the suburbs. Never had a criminal record. Started his own business. Invested in uh, stocks. He literally followed, hand, like point blank, like everything. And he still was a statistic. So don't think you're too far gone from it. Don't think you're too far gone from it. So you guys can either be a part of the problem or a part of the solution. 
Right now, they're part of the problem. Armed police officers at a meeting talking about police accountability is disrespectful to all the family and to everybody here. If you guys are going to a meeting, why the hell do you guys have to bring your gun? Yeah. For real. Right. Why do you have your gun? Why are you guys coming in bulletproof vests? Mm. Are you guys that terrified of protesters? Mm. Do you guys honestly think we came here to burn shit down or... Well, I don't know what you guys think. Right? It just does not make sense. It's not only disrespectful, it's hurtful to the family. Because sometimes this is intimidation it's exactly what it is. It's intimidation. You're trying to intimidate us because you know you have a room full of people with traumatic experiences with the police. So you decide to come armed in your uniform to intimidate us, to bring that traumatic experiences to trigger us. Well, I'm not so easily startled. Okay? They don't intimidate me. They've done the worst already. They've murdered our family. They've murdered people we love. So they've done the worst already. So the intimidation is over with. I'm tired of living in fear. What can they take from us that they haven't taken? You took our kids. You took our loved ones. You took our children, siblings. What can you take from us? And you still but have you the blood from your hands for doing it. Yep. It's right. still dripping. It There's no blood the 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 on Look at the carpet. There will be blood stains of all these people's men and all the people not held accountable. Well, I like to read this. Those closest to the problem are closest to the solution, mm -hmm. but farthest from the resources and power. No movement for social justice has ever succeeded without the full participation and leadership of those most affected. Mm. Glenn E. Martin, founder of GM Training, Trainers and Leadership USA. Yes. These are the people that should be at the table. This key is who you should be meeting with and you know it. And I want to ask you, why have you not reached out to any families before this working group? I am asking you a question and I would like an answer. Why have you not reached out to any of the families whose loved ones' lives were stolen by police before you did this working group? Because the meaning of having the camera, because the camera actually is to be a tech body to see what the police do, to see their problem and destruction. But up to today, we haven't got any food to We don't know what happened to our loved ones. We haven't seen any cameras. Even the other family families before us, they said the camera was a bigot. So it's not showing the camera what they did. So what's the meaning for having the camera? So they are the ones who they root their bowel. They are just killing the person and they're hiding the cameras. And what happened? He tells him, you know, this is a pending investigation. You say you want to put place, uh, stuff in place to make sure police are being held accountable. This is your key. Right now, the officer who shot my brother in Egan came, I mean, in Duluth, came to Egan without a mental health check. And then he killed Isaac Aiden. And now he did not get a mental health check. And now he's back on the job. So you're telling me someone who killed two people is mentally stable enough to keep doing exactly what he's doing. No, he's just an evil. And all the officers that were involved want out of de-escalation training. At a very sensitive situation, why the hell are we putting those on the front line? Those people on the front line. I don't want to be getting any calls. I don't want to hear anything of you guys trying to help us as soon as my brother's case is closed. Yeah. You guys have, you guys can actually do something right. while the case is still pending. Do you know under Minnesota state law, all the officers who shot at my brother, their names were supposed to be released the day they were put on paid administrative leave. Me and my sister had to go to the BCA countless times just to try to get their names. And when we got their names, there's no pictures associated with them. I don't even know how my brother's killers look like. Two of the uh, five officers who killed my brother with rifles previously killed people. A third one has three lawsuits filed against him for his uh, conduct in the yeah, DWI test. And I was the police officer of the year, so I want to know what you guys use to determine police officer of the year. Because that's called the respect for the law award. What respect do you have for the law if you have three lawsuits filed against you by three different people? I want to answer, answer, answer why our families are not here. Why did you not reach out to us to help? To, why? Where, where's the answer for that? Let them answer. I got the answer. Let them talk. Let's see what he has to say. Well, uh, thank you for allowing me to, to respond. To no problem. Go ahead. Uh, the bottom line is, this is about system change. No, this not. is about system change. It's about changing uh, the, the way that these matters are handled in general. It's not focused on any particular case. 
It's looking at uh, the body of ideas, many of which you all have brought forth today. Uh, in fact, we everything you said, other than this bending this this working group, is on the table as far as I'm concerned. But you said we, we brought this together today. You've been knowing about this. Sorry. You two all of cat to even think you fooled the kids. Let, let, let me just say, let me just say this. You, you've let been just, knowing about this. Let me just say this, Kevin. Kevin, let me just say this. Let's let's we're let's let's say that you guys asked me a question. Let me answer it. And, and, I, and I'm happy. 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 And i am happy 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 and
But but if you're but if what you're saying is you want us to hear from some people. Listen, if what you, you if it has been said that there are families here, there are folks who want to be heard. We, not heard, have the power. We Do are you here. not believe these people know what the systems that they need to change? We are here to hear people, to hear all the voices. The point has been made that there, look, the scroll is enormous. If there are folks who want to share their views and help inform the work that we're doing, we want to receive it. That's why we've been doing. That's why you said it. That's, that's why you've been avoiding us. Right? 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 There's no one. Yeah. Gators hunt them down in Florida. They can take a lot, but people, black men, 
It's their life, so it's their life. 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 Now, if I have a conversation, you want to start sending you some, some emails and some legislation we want to see in place, that's going to give you a change. We can do that. I don't want to sit at the table with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just start writing right. the legislation. I can start writing legislation. I got a little while to That's how what we need to see. We need to see that put it better. That's how we get changed. Drop out conversations, and we don't have to meet. It can all be done in the Because it's talking now and doing nothing. Get it up. Get it up. Nothing ever gets done. It could have been done a long time ago. Because we saw when Prince died. That was well, the emergency session called, and that legislation was written to keep those tax dollars in Chad mm -hmm. So when something can be done that fast, or mm -hmm. the death of a celebrity, all these people, they were celebrities in our lives and in their families. Right. 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 You can do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Call the emergency session and have some change. Mm -hmm. There's no but reason to have a discussion when you guys see what the problem is. We're here, and the problem is here. Mm -hmm. So what's to continue to have this <coughs> fake panel? Because it's a fake panel. All this is fake. If the families aren't here, it's fake. So what's the use of having it continuing with something that's not even real? This isn't even legitimate. Mm -hmm. the, the families are hurting, the families are here. So what's the use of continual conversation when you know what the problem is? All the people are here. And well, that's what we're saying. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. These guys all want to act like they have to wait for their seat sitting here. You don't. I have meeting with these families week in and week out. I do this as a volunteer. I do not get paid to do this work. What if my friend is sitting there? I meet with families week in and week out. I don't have to protest. What do you mean? What do you mean? I don't have to protest. I don't care about you. I don't care about you. But you're in the book business. If you don't like it, you don't perceive it. The meeting is just with people who are dealing with the effects of police brutality. That's what we do. But we never see you in the community. I don't see you sit with the families like I do. I don't see you going to protests, going to city council meetings, or any of this stuff. None of y'all got any legitimacy. None of y'all work on this issue routinely. There's people in this room who do, and there's family members who are suffering. And there's people in communities that need to be represented, and none of y'all represent any of those groups of people. That's why you have no legitimacy. The only all need to take yourselves home. The only to, stated goal in your you press release announcing this working group was to discuss. You want to talk about system change? This is what it is. It's 19 years worth of victim <coughs> impact statements. We didn't pull this out of thin air. These are proven practices. Communities of color are not enemy combatants uh, based on fear-based training. And people These with disabilities are recommendations on target that need to be yes, implemented right. now and not a year from now after you've discussed it and regurgitated your discussion. And see, and 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 see if it's okay and with the police lobbyists. You know, they got to have the permission of the police lobby and all their law enforcement buddies to make one tiny ass little change in the legislature. Let me tell you something, your days are not. You're going to, you're going to say I'm talking more. We're going to say I'm talking more. I don't mean a physical threat. I do not mean it that way. I want that clear. What I'm saying is your days of controlling the legislature, your days of running these little panels of discussions and woody wood all that, those days are over. So, We're done with discussions. So, We're ready for so, action. So, so Michelle, to have no action. I, I want to ask, ask you all a question. I want to ask you a question. So look, we're here to listen to you. We're here to so if your but if your goal is if your only goal is to stop us from having a conversation and listening to you and listening to you. I'm trying to ask you. I'm trying to ask you. Why did you come to us before this conversation? This is a community. This is a community. This is a community. This is a community conversation. So, if you're going. We didn't go to the community. So stop that bullshit. 
if your goal right. is That's to right. stop us from having this yeah. conversation yeah. right yeah. now, yeah. 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 then honestly, yeah. 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 let him answer. Let him answer. Let him answer. If, like if your goal is to stop us from having this conversation right now, then I'm going to move to postpone the meeting, and we'll be no, here another have time. But if your goal, is, but if your goal is, is to bullshit. share with us these very important, tragic situations, you already know. Then, you know. You know. us from talking, yeah. we will stop talking, right. but if you all want us to hear from you and you've already shared the stories, then we'll sit here and listen to them. That is the point of what we're doing, is to listen okay. to them. Okay. So, so if you're saying, I really dislike cops. Really do. 
<laughs> but, and, but I've even offered, and there have been others in my community who, who have adverse experiences with law enforcement every day. I know, I'm the one that sits there and takes the phone call from the parent or the individual in jail at 2 a.m. calming them down and trying to figure out what can we do to get them some resources. Every day, that's what I do, 2 a.m. Uh, this is Archer Amorosi. As a volunteer. As a volunteer, this is Archer Amorosi. Archer Amorosi doesn't look like your so-called stereotypical portrayal of a police brutality victim on the news. He's, he's, he's a white kid from Chanhassen. The only crime that Archer was guilty of was having a mental health crisis. His mother called the police. His mother called the cops. Thinking she was going to get help the only his time, dad, her son's dead. And again, the only time the crisis team showed up was to deliver lunch to the cops who were there after they shot him. Um, you know, we have, a, we have an issue with crisis intervention in this state. We have a massive issue with crisis intervention. We have a massive issue with people with disabilities. 50%, 50% of these people that lose their lives to police brutality are my people. And mental health should not end up as a death sentence. I, I don't remember Minnesota having a death penalty. Hey, Keith, if I can say, hey, Keith, if I can say this, but, you know, somebody said it earlier, we know what's going on here, right? I mean, people have died as a result of having mental health issues, right? Folks have died running from the police. They died under questionable circumstances. Most of the people, if we're honest, people who were killed by the police should not be killed. That's now, here's, here's the thing. Now, we live in a society where we brag about, in fact, in the U.S., we brag about being the most civilized society, not in the world, in the history of the world. We brag about them being democratic. But in a society like that, folks shouldn't have to embarrass themselves, come get out of bed early on Saturday morning, and raise their own, and look crazy in front of people looking like we're crazy. But we're not crazy. People are frustrated. You're hearing the pain. You have no idea. You have no idea the pain of someone who's <coughs> lost a child by in the hands of the state. That's betrayal. It's an ultimate betrayal because we present ourselves as a civilized society and that life is sacred. So if life is sacred, mother, we have to do something different. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over. You can't have blue ribbon panels. We know what should happen. If the police take someone's life, they should be prosecuted. If I take someone's life, I'm going to be prosecuted. This is common sense. We shouldn't have to be here Saturday morning raising the other body. Everybody sitting here knows the solution. If, if we're going to live in a real society among human beings right, and respect each other as human beings, <coughs> this has to be something. It's an emergency thing. It's an urgent thing. We treat it as a, well, let's sit around and talk about it. People are still dying. Right. We can't just sit around and say, this is an emergency. You have to yeah. treat it like an emergency. <coughs> and also, you know what the solutions are. We keep talking about going to the BCA. Mike Freeman exposed the BCA for what it is in the, uh, in the uh, uh, what's her name, Trump, right? right? She exposed them. They're not, they're basically covering up what's already been done. So clearly they're not the agents to go through. So clearly what needed is some independent folks, folks who are separated from the police, from the uh, county attorney's office, independent human beings who have maybe law degrees or whatever, who can sit and judge these things fairly. That's one solution, right? The other one is, if somebody shoots somebody, you take them off the street right away. You send a message of disrespect. Because you see, you send them to the office, and they're on the street. So this, this woman saw the, the guy who killed her husband at a protest. That's evil. That's, that's cruel. Yeah. And so we're here because this thing is just wrong. And what we need to do is not have blue ribbon panels about it. Implement the things that we know needs to happen. This ain't no, ain't no genius to figure this out. Now, that is. If we live in a society that we say we live in, now maybe we don't. I mean, that, that's possible too. Maybe this is a society governed by white supremacy and that money is the only thing that counts. That might be who we are. We have to be honest at some point because I tell you what, if we have to keep coming back in, it's a condemnation of all of us. That's right. And so, now, let, on now this panel? if I could just say this, look, you guys, the fact is, is that we're here to listen to you. And I'm prepared to be here all day to do that. You didn't even stop. 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 Let me finish. No, let me, let me finish. Let, let me just finish, okay? So, so the thing is, I'm I, I'm scheduled to be here at 5:30. I'll be here until then. I am leaving then, just so you know. But I'll be working on this. It's, no, no. But the thing is, is that I. Michelle, we've received a lot of valuable information just this morning. You've been on that. No, not sure. You've been on that. 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 You've been on that.
I've been out in the streets for years and years. I've never seen you. We come out to our mosques when it's time for election and everything. You come into our mosques looking for our votes and everything. But when my brother was killed, why didn't you come into our mosques and see how my community was doing? Today was let me get this straight. 
9 to 5.30, all these little panels of experts, including their so-called community experts, which didn't actually have anybody on it from this community. You're saying, oh, I came in here, what you had to say? No, you didn't. Your plan, as published, as you published, was to hear from the community from 4.45 until 5.30. I don't exactly call that listening. And I definitely don't call it listening when you have this group of people at the table. You've already tried to justify. You've already tried to justify police killing by the wording of this panel. Yes, right. You said Philando yeah. Castillo's uncle lost his nephew from the to gun violence. It was, it was police violence. It was police murder. They executed the whole thing. The world the world was 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 no, please. You're justifying. Officer, You're trying to put a no, bandaid over it. Cause officer. Instigated shootings. Don't call it officer involved, like they're standing off to the they side. Just like they, they, gun they are the shooters. They are the killers. They are, they the, are the gang bangers. They, they are the serial killers. They are the officer involved shootings. That's crap. And you chose the word. And then you got Mike Freeman and John Joyce, right. the ones who allow them yep. to get away with murder over and over again. Now, not by that white man. Because right they're right not right the right solution. Right. They're the answer to the fucking problem. Yep. It always have been. They are the problem. Uh, excuse me, Mike Freeman does not let police get away with murder if they're black Muslim. And no, you said that, but I've also yeah. said no, no, they charge Muslim. cops by the color of their skin and not by the crime. Yeah. I've been stated that, yeah. but still. Millions, millions before him, or thousands, have gotten away with murder, and they're all white. Well, hell, I knew Norm was going to be convicted of a man's life. Oh, yeah. um, and Mike Freeman, we know that you that out. We know that you're but right. had he killed a black woman, a man, he'd have been walking the beach right now today. Oh, oh, but because Justine was white, he had to go and then again, I will say, sight <laughs> unseen. In the world, watch Philando Castile be executed. Right. And yeah, that ass ass walked away with fucking murder. And John Troy, that fucking sham you split off for a fucking damn trial. Sure. Oh, and you were so wrong and broke the damn on top of your fucking head. And you chose to wear the these people instead of us. That was your choice. You chose to work with the murderers and the people that cover up the police murders of the people in the community, and you decided not to work with us. Earlier this year, all kinds of lip service to working with us, but that's bullshit. Earlier this year, you promised to look into the BCA. Even Mike Freeman came out and said how corrupt the BCA was, how they rubber stamp, fumble and are inept at investigations of police guns. And you promised the community you will find to out take action for like that was the government to with 60% police officers and then have the BCA come testify about, to you about the problems of the BCA. These people can tell you about the problems of the BCA. Michelle has pages and pages of investigation. You choose to have the cops Come have a little chat with you about the police problems instead of actually engaging something that would help. We need help. People are being murdered. People are being brutalized, and there is no accountability. Stand up. Be the progressive you pretend to be, and take action for these people. Yeah. Yeah, don't have the conversations to do it either. We don't need that. We know what needs to be done. Just get about doing it. This is a white man who's talking to him. This is a white man who has not lost a loved one due to police brutality, but he's standing up for our families, mm -hmm. talking to you. you, you Michelle has been to my home. When my son's father was murdered, I had to scrape up my money, the little money I had, after they murdered my son's father, who was the other provider in my home, to pay for another investigator, to try to investigate the police, because it was a complete cover-up. Complete cover up. So I'm scraping money together, trying to raise my child, pay my bills, to try to get the truth of what I know really happened to my son's father. I see the video from Walmart that's edited. This is what's going on. And if you're, like I said, if you're having this discussion without us, it, it's it's void. It's not real. Disrespect. It's, it's, it's hurtful. It's disrespectful to our family. 
voluntarily change. The whole point of us being here is we need to do the things they're not going to choose how to do. That's right. They're not going to choose to reform themselves because the system works for them right now. Right. The cops get to get away with murder. The prosecutors get to cherry pick the cases that they know will get a conviction. Mm -hmm. They don't have to, they don't feel like they have to change because the, the system works for them right now. We're here to demand that you do the things you don't want to do, the things that are uncomfortable, the things that require you to make real sacrifices. That's why we're here today. You don't have the most possible problem on your panel. Why are y'all here today? Why are you guys still that? You guys are going to have to go to this guy's face. There should be no cops on that panel. So why are you guys still here? Let me just say this. 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 I'm sorry. Look, look, look. We are here, all of us are here to provide system change, and, and that's what we're here for. Now, let me finish, Michelle. Michelle, let me, just, Michelle, let me just finish my point. If you all are saying that you will not let us have the meeting, and stop, stop, and, and, you, will, and you will not bring forth the 10 families that you mentioned, who we are here to listen to. Who we are here to listen to. You are here. You are here.
Don't yeah. don't change the narrative now. That's right. You dropped the ball. Be a stand-up guy and admit that you have dropped the ball and you continue to drop the ball on every case that you control. That's done right. by the BCA. That's right. That's all y'all do is dirty up everything. But you want to act like nobody's here. You want to act like families aren't crying. You want to act like blood is dripping from your hands too. We see the public be missing their food last hour.